I spoke with Senator Chuck Hagel uh, of Nebraska, an early Republican critic of the war. He's out with a brand new book on ways to try to improve the U.S. image around the world. It's called America, Our uh, Next Chapter. I asked Senator Hagel if President Bush is giving the public too rosy a picture of what's happening in Iraq right now. Some of, of his critics, the president's critics, saying, uh, you know, he's... He's uh, basically ignoring reality on the ground in Iraq right now. And then some of his severe critics say he's living in a dream world. What do you say as someone who has, uh, who has criticized him over these years? Well, I, I think this is another episode of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, what's up is down and what's down is up. Uh, what do you mean stability and security? Baghdad, for exam example, has been over the last year essentially ethnically divided. Uh, you, you've separated the Sunnis and the Shias and to, and to somehow make some assertion that uh, things are looking much, much better in Baghdad and it's calm again and it's back to where it used to be is just is not, not the case. And when you look at the uh, casualties the United States has taken uh, since the so-called military surge, over 900 deaths, you look at almost 30,000 wounded and the money we've put in there. And then, then the other point of this is, too, if, in fact, uh, the surge has calmed things to a point where the president and his others are saying, well, they've done a, done a great service and they've achieved some terrific things, why then is the administration talking about keeping more American troops in Iraq for the remainder of this year than we had before the surge? So, no, this is still a very unstable, serious, dangerous situation in Iraq. You've served with all three of these remaining presidential candidates, uh, John McCain, uh, and, and Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, they're all senators. You know them well. Who is most qualified among these three to be the next commander-in-chief? Uh, first, I know all three, as you say. I've served with all three. Uh, I, I am not going to endorse a, a candidate for president today by uh, saying uh, who I believe is the most qualified to be commander-in-chief. That will play out. Well, if the American people will make that decision. I've not endorsed anyone uh, for president, and I've not endorsed uh, anyone partially because I want whoever those final two candidates are to explain to the American people how they are going to unwind American involvement in this fiasco in Iraq and what their foreign policy is going to look like over the next four years. We've done terrible damage to so, our country around the world. Well, without endorsing any candidate, uh, as far as the Iraq policies they've enunciated, whether it's McCain or Obama or Clinton, whose Iraq strategy, as you've heard it, do you like the most? Well, uh, obviously what I've heard, like the American people have heard, is McCain on one side is say, saying, we'll stay there until there's victory and uh, whatever it takes, we're going to win. On the other side, both Obama and, and Clinton have both said we're coming out. That's not good enough because each of the two final candidates are going to have to enunciate how are we coming out? How responsibly are we coming out? Under what basis? Under what timeline? Uh, I don't agree with John McCain, and you know this Wolf, I think uh, John and the president and others have put the Iraqi situation in the wrong context. This isn't a win or lose. The Iraqi people will decide whether uh, they want the government they want uh, in place and win. We can help them. But, but we shouldn't be framing this up as win or lose because when we do that, and this is where I have a major disagreement with McCain, then on that, on that basis we'll be there forever because uh, the Iraqis are going to have to find some political accommodation, some political reconciliation to fix this. Just as General Petraeus said, Petraeus said a week ago that the biggest disappointment, the biggest failure there over the last year after and during the surge has been very little political progress, which in the end is all that's going so, to matter. So bottom line right now, at this point, you have an open mind and, and, and you could endorse in the end any one of these three. Uh, or I may not endorse anyone. Is that, is that uh, possible, you think? Sure it is. I may not endorse uh, any of the candidates. But I do think this is so serious for the future of our country and for the world that we get this right over the next four years because of the terrible blunder that we made here over the last few years. Uh, you, you've known Obama since he came into the Senate. He's on the Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, have you seen any, anything that points to him, any strengths that he's shown in terms of his Senate record? Uh, I've, I've uh, uh, cooperated with Obama, and I have uh, co-sponsored with Obama a number of pieces of legislation, one on being a new uh, nonproliferation bill, which I'm very uh, proud of. I think Obama is a very bright, uh, agile 
uh, intuitive, uh, not only politician, but individual. John McCain is bright, experienced, smart. Hillary Clinton is certainly experienced and smart. I think uh, any of those three uh, is qualified to be president of the United States. What kind of a president they'd be, uh, no, one, no one can tell. All right, I want to just read one quote from the book uh, because it's a powerful quote and, and get your uh, explanation. So why did we invade Iraq? I believe it was the triumph of the so-called neoconservative ideology as well as Bush administration arrogance and incompetence that took America into this war of choice. They obviously made a convincing case to a president with very limited national security and foreign policy experience who keenly felt the burden of leading the nation in the wake of the deadliest terrorist attack ever on American soil. But the words arrogance and incompetence jumped out at me. Uh, you want to elaborate on... Uh, on what you, you meant by writing those words? Sure. Well, uh, I did write those words, uh, and uh, I meant it, and I still mean it, and I think it was arrogance and incompetence that uh, put this uh, country in such a hole here around the world. Arrogance meaning that uh, they, they wouldn't listen to anyone. They didn't listen to our allies. Uh, every major leader uh, in the Middle East that I talked to, uh, and I certainly know the president and others talked to before we invaded Iraq, warned the president, warned the vice president, warned Secretary Powell not to do this. Even a number of senior Israeli officials warned them not to do it. Members of Congress asked questions. Uh, I was among those who said, wait a minute, slow down. Uh, let the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency officials, finish their job. Slow this train down. Uh, they wouldn't listen to anybody. It was just raw uh, arrogance. Incompetence? I think it was incompetence. Uh, 